This does feel like porn. It is weird. I say podcasts are um, strippers for friendship. I yeah. think it's worse. Yeah, where they go, hey, baby. Yeah. You go, hey, you want to listen to a story? Also, <laughs> don't forget to get Casper mattresses. <laughs> You know, you know this podcast would be really good. That's what Patreon is—is is a private dance. Yeah, exactly. They go, you want to, you want to go in the back? Anything goes. You guys, it's, just, it's actually the same shit. Yeah, it just costs it's more money. Just the same. <laughs> it's just the same with a little more spit. And a, and occasionally someone will blow you. Occasionally a real down and out comical fucking put lips to tube. Um, I was thinking about this because I love liquids. I love liquids too. But now. I love beverages. Are we talking liquids or beverages? Beverages, but... You think you love beverages more than I love beverages? Yeah, I'm an alcoholic. Oh, okay. All I right. absolutely... <laughs> I have a disease that's caused by my love <laughs> of beverages. All right. Okay. I can't have certain beverages because I imbibe too much. Okay. You're a food guy. Yes. I've never been a food guy. That is true. Yes. We, have. we, we go on the road together sometimes and... I'm telling you right now, Louis, you're a hungry, hungry hippo. I can't stop eating, you, man. I'm if, so hungry all the time. He burns calories in a way <laughs> where we'll be, we'll be before a show and he'll be like, I have to eat. And I'm like, oh, no, it's cool, man. We'll get food after the show. And you go, what do they have nearby? You're like, <laughs> you'll go venture out. We could be in a war zone and you'd be like, I have to go eat. <laughs> I can't. I can't do it without eating. I'm weird like do that. Do you do the hot girl thing where you go like, my blood sugar is crashing? I, maybe that's what it is. I'd like to put some science to it. I'm just like, I'm hungry. I got to eat now. I don't but know. Louis, you're a gremlin. Yeah, I have to feed you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. It, yeah, because you're like, dude. I need eat. it. You've ate. When we were in Atlanta, I think you ate before the show. Like five meals. <laughs> yeah, during. You're a hobbit. You have second <laughs> breakfast. He's just like constantly eating. I can't eating. stop, man. I've never understood that. I don't have to eat. I If I get on stage and I haven't eaten... The words, I can't find the words. Like, rah, rah. She used to do a whole special like that called Louis Katz Hungry. <laughs> and it's you being like, no, oh, fucking no, It's man. worse. I'll turn on the crowd. It's like, yeah, it's what not- the fuck do you want from me, jokes? <laughs> I go, dude, you got to feel You are the Snickers commercial. Yes. You're like, yes. hey, Louis, you weren't yourself. I'm you're Roseanne like, before that or what? <laughs> she looks like Dr. Zayas. <laughs> and you're like, no, Roseanne, you can't say that. <laughs> they should have used her real tweets in that commercial. They should have. <laughs> When she's Roseanne, bring her back for another Snickers commercial. Because she's saying some real hungry shit now. She's saying some real, I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, that's funny. What? I'm just saying. Here's a Snickers. You should just do that. They should just do that with like... um, when people are saying wild shit, just give them a Snickers. That should be the new thing. Well, Instead that, of icing someone with Zimas, uh-huh. just give like snicker them. The when problem I, is it still sounds like a slur a little yeah. bit. It's not going to clear the air necessarily. Oh, yeah, what are you, a snicker? <laughs> guy's a real <laughs> We have to bleep it. Watch yeah. YouTube be like, hey, we got to demonetize this. You guys are getting fucking insane calling everything Snickers. <laughs> See, uh, now it sounds bad. I wish I hadn't said brought that up. It sounds Oh, horrible. man, with American history, that does lend itself to a word that we can't be using. But it is, I mean, whenever someone usually, I guess it's the way that I don't really give a shit about eating, but when someone's like, I need to eat, I'm like, ah, you can put it off for four hours. Nope. No. Nope. Can't. No. It sucks. I tour with you. I tour with the tell. Neither of you eat. Like pretty much most of the tell literally doesn't eat all day and only eats after the shows. And he smokes cigarettes and drinks coffee. I smoke weed and drink coffee. Yeah. You'd think I would eat more the, the amount yes. of weed I smoke. Yeah. But no, it's all saved oh. for sweets. <laughs> I did a benefit show recently where they uh-huh. checked your blood level. It was like for di- it was the it was, the benefit was for people with diabetes, and they did a thing. Which by the way, I love Andy Stuckey. Uh, great, we worked on together on Guy Code and mm. Guy Court. Which, guy Court? Is that real? Yeah, you didn't know what Guy Court was? Jesus, it sounds Did like you a ever sketch. Know? It sounds no. like gay porn. Yeah. <laughs> guy Court, where they're like, where they're like what? you've been accused of being a power bottom. How do you plead? <laughs> and you're like, gaping. <laughs> but but they, uh, so they, I, I explained this on the bonfire, because Jay used to love to make fun of me about it, which he should. But Guy Code was a show on MTV too. Uh-huh. It was like, you know. I know Guy Code. I just Guy didn't... Code was like Chris Stefano, Andrew Schultz, Little Duvall, Charlemagne, John Gabris, a ton of comics yeah. that like, you know, are very successful now. Pete was on it too, right? Pete Davidson. Yeah. Yeah. They just, man, there's so many. Damian Lemon. Yes. There was a lot of great guys on there. And, they're, um, and then they did a spinoff where they were like, hey, what happens when your friend breaks Guy Code? Time to take them to guy court. To guy court. Did you wear a powdered wig? 
Dude, I would have loved it. No, no, rubble, 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 rubble. If he floats, he breaks sky code. And just give him old Salem witch trial things. Uh, put a fire to him. No. Duval appeared in his dream. What about if he was? He had like a southern lawyer. Like, yeah. you could well, so listen to yeah, this. All right. shit. Okay, all right. <laughs> so my manager's like, they called me. Ryan called me. and was like, hey, do you want to do guy court? And I did the thing where you're like, oh, thanks. No, <laughs> I just, I just knew I wouldn't be right for it because mm. I didn't, I didn't have like the boisterous personality. You're boisterous. I, I can be boisterous, but not all the time. <laughs> That's true. And they were like, my manager goes, oh, we'll just ask for a crazy amount of money and they'll say no. Yeah. And then you look fine. That's the best. Fuck yeah. you money. Yeah. Just be like, give me this money. And yeah. they're like, no, then I don't do it. Yeah. And I was like, uh, all right, try it. And then he called me, he goes, they said, yes, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta do four episodes. And I was like, oh, so I got a haircut and they cut it real short. Mm -hmm. I've told this story recently, but I had a boxy suit and then my case was. You had to wear a suit. I, they, they gave me a really bad suit. It was like really boxy. Where, is it on a set or like any, like what it's is. A, you can find footage of it. <laughs> but the first case I had to argue uh -huh. was I was the prosecution. This guy said that his friend broke guy code by listening to r&b in the car with him like sexy music while they were driving and he broke guy code because anything that can be affiliated with homosexuality apparently that's the rule about guy code that's the ultimate guy code is fucking another guy yeah that's dude. right i mean yeah spartans <laughs> they I'm wrote saying. guy code <laughs> they were like i fucked this young boy and he's my trusted soldier now <laughs> but they um the case was the defense was no you can listen to r&b in the car with your friend i and they they tell you what you're going to be like you're prosecuting this case you don't get to pick it okay sure so i had to say there it is dude look at that oh, oh my god, god. Wait, let me ridiculous see that. I see that. I found that so quick look at that bad cut so you'll understand that why this case is so bad and and homeless <laughs> people hit it in the edit on the video i had to defend that it was bad to listen to r&b music when i had a short haircut and a boxy <laughs> suit so i looked like a 1950s lawyer where i was like while they can exist it's separate but equal <laughs> like, that's what i was like i was basically arguing like oh I, I i was the education and they were brown brown v the board well i learned an environment to baffle the brains so dude i immediately was like i'm gonna lose every fucking case and then i think i was two and two because twice they put me against another white and i just mopped the floor with them oh, but nice. i lost to charlemagne and duval Oh, well, there you go. They're, they're they're tough. Do any take? Yeah, they're cool black dudes. Yeah, they're gonna fucking mop me when they got Lil in one name, the God in the other. You can't compete with yeah, that. Yeah, I would have to be Little God, <laughs> Little Dan the God. That's good. Or Big Dan the Saint, <laughs> Big Dan the Devil. Go, we can't call you Big Dan the Devil. <laughs> I'm Big Dan the Devil. <laughs> that, sounds, that also sounds like a great tattoo artist. <laughs> Big Dan the Devil. What do you want me to do? Your whole back? Or a hot rod guy? Yeah. yeah. Hey, whatever. I crash it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a stunt man. <laughs> hey, I'm Big Dan the Devil. How you doing? I'm going to be jumping through that building for you today. What's going on? You're right. There's no way. I never thought about it. I went against a little and a the, yeah, the yeah, God. Yeah. Not even the God. No. The God. That's yeah, right. Change that vowel, you dork. <laughs> it's an A, not an E, square honky. <laughs> you fucking cracker. Yeah, you can't compete. I would be I would be Big Dan the devil. <laughs> oh, with E? Yeah. Oh yeah. You really stick it back. Even I would even go thy. <laughs> thy devil back when we were do, doing some real colonial dirt <laughs> big dan thy devil <laughs> i'm on the road i'm leaving this little fatso back here in new york e end of the month i will be at zany's in nashville thursday through saturday one of my favorite clubs march 28th through the 30th then next month i'll be headed to old omaha nebraska Listen, I know we have beef from the Colorado, Nebraska days. I didn't even go to see you. I just grew up re rooting for him. But I do, I am excited to come back to the Omaha Funny Bone April 11th through the 13th. And then I'll be at the DC Improv April 19th through the 21st. Go to dansoder.com for those tickets and go to youtube.com and watch On the Road, my special. It keeps her fed. Isn't that right? Yeah. Fuck this dog rules.
<laughs> oh man, have you? You've never been overweight though. The way you eat, no. Is it just? I you exercise you? a lot. I can't sleep if I don't exercise. I think it's the same problem. Do you so have I, a gerbil wheel at home? <laughs> <laughs> I should have a giant wheel. That would be very helpful if I had a giant wheel. Well, yeah, or or basically, do you have like a um, treadmill? Yeah, treadmill. <laughs> I couldn't think of the time. <laughs> I am. They have like, these for humans now. Yeah, actually, yeah. they call them the treadmill. <laughs> I could bring up hamster wheel before I could bring up treadmill. <laughs> yeah, you got a giant, uh, <laughs> got a giant water thing where you can suck the straw. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, have to run it's called a brita I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I i'm a human yeah <laughs> sorry my mother raised me in a lab doing science experiments <laughs> i show you my shaved belly <laughs> and all these holes it's all uh, on this side of your face is all this makeup they yeah, can't see it. <laughs> I, uh, it burned my skin <laughs> it burned my, yeah dude that so you never got fat no I've if never, you stopped exercising would you be a little chunk probably i eat kind of healthy and literally i have to exercise like if i can't i can't sleep i got i got i I just don't sleep very well if I don't exercise. So it's You're not even humming, a choice. Huh? You're a hummingbird. Yeah, I guess that's what it is. You're L Louis the Hummingbird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they're calling you. I like that. That's not yeah. bad. <laughs> Louis the, the Hummingbird. But I'm not actually that like, I'm not like a peppy guy. I mean, you say you're not boisterous. I think I'm less boisterous than you. You're more it's boisterous It's crazy than me. that you exercise that much with your personality. You do not have the personality of a man that exercises. What does that mean? A lot of times people that uh, exercise a lot, uh -huh. they're um, uh, insufferable. <laughs> well, they, just, they just like kind of show up and they're like yeah i got a good they talk about it a lot you don't talk about it i'm embarrassed by it I, like, you listen and i'm saying this is a lumpy piece of shit <laughs> i'm jealous of people that exercise but you don't have that personality thank you well thanks it's just i i am i am embarrassed by it. i say that's why the um that's why they play that horrible music whenever you go to the gym to remind you of what a douchebag you are for being here look at you fucking douche this is the kind of, this is your personality in music form this horrible have ever, music have you ever gotten into a song at the gym though i don't belong Be real. i don't i don't what kind of gym do you think i'm going to i'm a i'm a blink planet fitness level dude i don't yeah, dude, I, there's I can't, no saunas at my gym there's no, not even showers at some of them i didn't no i'm saying music they're playing at the gym have you ever been like Wait, you don't have a sauna? What kind of rocky gym no, are you working no out at? No fucking big money, Dan. I know I wasn't. You know what? Big I wasn't on a show Dan. called Billions. Okay, I don't have these. Yeah, things. Well, they didn't pay me billions. They paid me scale. <laughs> <laughs> I barely. You think I got this place because of billions? I got this from selling fentanyl. <laughs> I'm dosing, folks. Uh, yeah, no, no. But, but I mean, a little. I've been doing this through insurance fraud. The guy that just gives away his crimes on a podcast. I didn't get this apartment through billions. I got it through funding the police <laughs> i've been taking their money <laughs> it'd be funny if they have the, they have to pass the law like they had to do for rappers like you can't use anything on a podcast yeah. rico in case court. yeah yeah rico you can't case. use in court dude they, i take down like 16 silly men <laughs> it's like nate nate's like why am i being drawn into this shane's like dude i just signed with bud light this is gay you're getting us all in trouble he's testifying in front of congress this is gay. It just has the name Shane goes. And then Nate's like, this is bananas. I don't even know soda. I was rooting for the lions. <laughs> You're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Dude, me putting down everyone. We should all have names like, you know, it's like, um, isn't that like the ASAP? It was like a gang. They all had like names like ASAP Rocky, ASAP. They were a marketing game. They're, they're geniuses with yeah. marketing, man. We they, should they start did doing it right. that. All right. Where should we be, dude? I'm, I'm the hunting, hummingbird and you're yeah. Big Dan the Devil. Dude, I don't I'm know. Big Dan the Devil. These names are <laughs> awesome. We did get biker names within an hour of doing this podcast. I, I still, I'm, I don't think I'm a hum, I don't think I have a hummingbird vibe. You do. Fidance is more of a hummingbird oh, energy. He's got woodpecker vibes, dude. He's just like, <laughs> I love Ian, but he's around. He's like, <laughs> which at times you're like, oh, it's majestic. And at times you're like, I have a headache. <laughs> you're a hummingbird. You, you, your wings are moving so fast. They look like they're still. And you don't even realize that you're like. <laughs> I think, I just think a hummingbird is just, you know, it's just a different energy than I got. What I'm would not, you say? What bird do you have the energy of? I'm not really, I'm more of a um, capybara. Excuse me, capybara. What is that? It's a giant uh, South African, a uh, South South American hamster. What? You know what I'm talking about? But it does. Uh, so far, you said the H word, which tracks. <laughs> what? Because you need your wheel. Yes, exactly. You need your little, I'm a, do you shit in pellets? <clears throat> no, no, I'm okay. good with the fiber. That would, that would lock it the up. The fiber helps keep me trim like this. Do you take fiber? No, I eat fiber. 
<laughs> I'm eating. I'm eating. Cheese I might seeds. have homeless pimp cut that up, so I just have that drop of you going. I eat fiber because you said it like so aggressively that I was like, "What did fiber kill your dad? Why is fiber?" You're I eat like, fiber for breakfast. Fuck fiber. Ooh, you want me to shit regularly and thick? <laughs> So you're a South American hamster, and what's it called? A ch- it's a capybara. I look a lot like it, like this. Here, here. I mean, we <laughs> don't bring it up. Capybara. Look, look, it looks like this. That's what it looks like. <laughs> what I love is knowing the edit is they're going to be able to. He'll be able to put it. It looks just like it. Do it again. Do your hamster face, <laughs> dude. You'll see in the picture. It looks just like him. See, I'm doing that face, dude. And all these monkeys are just chilling on its back. <laughs> Damn, dude, about do the, the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It's you're crazy, a, right? You're a capybara. <laughs> <laughs> capybara. I would have never known how to say that. That's so funny. <laughs> South Af- dude, I'm trying to think what I would be. I would be a sloth. I have a lot of sloth energy. Or bear like I mean that deep voice yeah. makes yeah. you know, makes it like I'm, I, but I'm not like scary bear. I'm like Baloo. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Or the other one, the uh, the Robin Hood bear. Yeah. Where I'm like little John. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. It's just, they're the same. They are, are, it's are the they? same energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're it's right. big and harmless. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. you're like he could turn on you if something bad happened. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. I'm always like, well, hey, Louie, did you get done eating? He just up on my shoulder. Or I'm just singing some song that I made up. Katie would absolutely agree with that because I sing made up songs, and she goes, Jesus, "What are you doing?" But I, I'm blueing it. I'm totally. going, when you're making a coffee and you put cream in it. <laughs> God, I must be annoying to live with. <laughs> oh, do, 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 do. Yeah. Call me Baloo. I'm damn the Baloo. It's also crazy. You're doing dad shit and you don't got a kid. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's just you. Well, when you don't have one, you 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 play the role yourself. Yeah, you're just being it. It's a one-man play. <laughs> Only child with no dad. Real one-man show, if you know what I mean. Oh, you I either know. do a one-man show or, or you, you are, are a one-man one. show. <laughs> it's, father... <laughs> if I ever get to that point, I want you to uh, I want you to uh, Wilkes Booth me. No way, John Wilkes Booth me. If I ever do a one, if I do a sincere one man show, where at any point I try to cry, put one on. Like if you see it, vulnerability is where it's at, man. Sure, yes, but you can be funny and vulnerable. Yes, sure. If I'm not being funny, all right, I'll shoot you. And if it's if it's one of those <laughs> things where I take myself too seriously, I'll shoot you. Yeah, dude, I'll shoot you. Right, in I'll the- snipe you. My hands are very shaky. I yeah. might miss the head. I just see a but red dot. <laughs> it's just, it's all over. It's I go, someone shoulder. feed him. Feed him now. And then it steadies. <laughs> oh, his blood sugar's up. I'm about to get my, blain, my brain's blown out. Did you eat even when, like, I remember specifically mm-hmm. when I was young. I was, like, maybe fourth grade. And I went to my friend Jason Poyle's house. Shout mm-hmm. out, Jason Poyle. We started texting again recently. Oh, yeah. um, I ate dinner at his house. And I drank too many liquids to the point that the parents were like you like to you like you like oh you're gonna fill up on whatever water and whatever juice whatever uh-huh. i was drinking and i was like no i want more li- i can't eat without my liquids did you ever get would you ever go to people's houses and they're like well louie can eat yes well yeah. it's like i had a, i had a um uh my high school girlfriend was korean so it was all about like korean american and she was all and about she brought home you well, How I wasn't. Was no, it? she had to lie about me. I wasn't her boyfriend. I was her friend. Oh, yeah. But I still impressed them with the eating skills. You know what really? I mean? When you, when you well, go to dude, someone's our house, Koreans like, oh, <laughs> look at that! Look at this guy fucking. Go- Are you fucking him? Well, the weird thing is, my dad loves to eat, but he's fat. And somehow I, the genes crossed, and I still love to eat, but I'm not fat. I don't so know how you it got the the hunger, but then you also got the you're a hummingbird. Yeah, yeah. You got to work out. Yeah, like no, it. you're a capoeira yeah. or whatever it's capybara. called. Capybara. Capybara. Capybara doing capoeira. Capybara. <laughs> <laughs> Just swinging his legs. You can AI that and probably make it look <laughs> fucking sick. <laughs> capybara doing capoeira. Um, so when you go, how old are you? Oh, when, this Korean. Girlfriend. That was that was like high school. I mean, I would. I guess I would eat a lot, but the weird thing is like. And I they would be impressed by it? Mostly people, mostly oh, impressed. like saying stuff in Korea. I would order weird shit. Sometimes oh, I would be yeah, yeah. like, mm-hmm. <laughs> is it agree with it? But I would, I didn't eat breakfast for like the first, most of my life until I became an adult myself. There's Me no too. breakfast in my house. Uh, no, no, no. I had cereal every morning. See, I'm, it's like, I run late and so does my family. Yeah. So it's like, I, like I gotta go and I didn't have time to eat and I really wouldn't eat breakfast. Now that I eat breakfast, but breakfast, man, that just warms me for lunch. You know what I mean? So you it's, get, it's like it's like a blowjob before sex. Yeah, you're like, ooh, what are we doing? Am I about to have a full lunch? <laughs> oh, 
eggs? What are you doing to me? Oh, you're about to have me have a sandwich and fries at lunch. Fuck. It really is. It doesn't. It just gets me out of the door to the place I'm going to have lunch is what the breakfast does for me. Do you get excited? But I don't, I don't eat heavy breakfast. Do, what do you have for breakfast usually? I have a, a non-fat Greek yogurt with chia seeds, granola, and some uh, blueberries. So you do a very healthy. That's what I'm saying. I'm healthy. But so also, that's like I, a, I'm healthy. I, you I, have sex, but it's intimate. Yes. <laughs> You're like, I care about this person yes. and it gets me excited to see them. Well, it's all about, I'm, I am, I do all the moderation so I can do the nasty shit when I want What's to. What's the nasty you know? shit? Oh, you know, pastrami, pepperoni, pizza, whatever the fuck yeah, I want. It's just regular meals for me, I, dude. I, 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 whatever, I, I thought you were changing it up with the new year. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> you were so committed to that last time. I haven't I drank soda. You. All right, there you go. I have not drank You're soda. You're on your no fizzy drink journey. No fizzies. You sent me that, <laughs> that guy doing the no fizzy thing. Uh, yeah, I haven't drank soda since the beginning of the year, but. We had Taco Bell last night. Oh, man, dude. What are you talking about? We live in the darkness. We're molded by it. <laughs> Stop. I like bad food. My body processes it. But I was saying about that um, the diabetes show. Uh-huh. But guys tend to think that looking sharp means starchy Oxfords and stiff chinos rather than effortless comfort. But it's possible to have both. Mack Weldon makes timeless apparel with modern performance fabrics for guys who want to look and feel sharp without sacrificing comfort. From their light as air underwear to innovative anti-odor tees and versatile yet comfortable pants, Mack Weldon is a full range of clothes that never go out of style. You know, most of my ads are to my dog. She's my number one. She's my number one listener. Well, no, who am I kidding? She doesn't listen to me half the time. But Mack Weldon, they sent me some stuff, and it's unbelievable. It's very comfortable and cool looking, which is very hard to get, Myrtle. Look at this fat belly. It's so hard to get. You know, you don't want to be too cool. You don't want to, like, uh, sometimes stuff is too flashy, like those perf like performance wear. You're like, oh, yeah, this isn't who the hell I am. I feel awkward in everything except, like, T-shirt and jeans. But Mack Weldon, it's comfortable. It's cool as hell. And that's the best mix you're going to get. Um Get timeless looks with modern comfort from Mack Weldon. Go to MacWeldon.com and get 20% off your first order with code SODER. That's going to be pretty awesome because they do look like regular clothes, but they feel like the most recent and modern comfort. So check out Mack Weldon. That's M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com. Promo code SODER for 20% off. I'd do that. I'd probably do that right now. That's pretty badass. And finally, our friends at ZocDoc. As a hypochondriac, I'm going to tell you right now, this is a promo that when it came into the fold, I was like, I already use it. ZocDoc. It's an app that helps you find a doctor, a specific doctor that you need in your area. I've been using Doc. So I don't want to be one of these guys that's like, I was there when the band was famous, before the band was famous, but I was. I was using ZocDoc all the way back in like, 2013 2014 so i've been down and now they're sponsoring soda so you know it's pretty badass but i'm telling you if you myrtle you don't trust me do you i've had i've been i've been messing with zocdoc since before you were born since before you were a a, a light in your dog, your dad's eyes i don't know how dogs do it you know we're learning from saint germain but i don't know how it goes while you might have to grin and bear your family, you shouldn't feel that way when talking to your doctor about that rash that looks weird. Or, you know, listen, here's the thing. When you have medical problems, you want to talk to somebody. You don't want to talk to your family. I'm a hypochondriac. I bother everybody with my problems. How about you just take it right to a doctor? So enter ZocDoc, the place where you can find and book doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. Because there's things in life that you have to compromise, like an apartment that i don't know maybe has noisy people in the hallways all the time this place but when it comes to your health there is no compromise so don't go back to that one doctor who uses your appointment to catch up on the latest headlines you want a doctor that worries about you check out zocdoc zocdoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online once you find the doc you want, you can book them immediately. No more waiting awkwardly on hold with a receptionist. And these docs have all verified reviews from actual real patients. You can filter specifically if ones that you that take your insurance are located near you and treat basically any condition you're searching for. The typical wait time to see a doctor booked on ZocDoc is between 24 and 72 hours. That's it. 
You can even score same day appointments. Go to ZocDoc.com slash Soder and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's ZocDoc, Z O C D O C dot com slash Soder, S O D E R, ZocDoc.com slash Soder. But I was saying about that, um, the diabetes show. Uh huh. I did it and they test your blood to see how close, you know, and I was like, this is a terrible idea for a comedy show. Yeah. Because if I am pre-diabetic, my set, I'm going to bomb. Does everyone there, so everyone in there has just got a diagnosis and then you perform? Well, they do the comics. So oh, everyone okay, there, the I think a lot of the audience was diabetic. And so they're like, for them, they're like, hey, are you one of us or not? And they prick your finger, then they test it. But I had a, I had like a really good rating and I was like, oh, I'm going to go eat candy. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's... <laughs> Has the eating caught up to you when you got older? No, I mean, no, not yet. Because, like, I know, I say I'm supposed to quit eating pizza because I'm supposed to go eat a physical in a month, and I know the guy's going to be like, yeah, your arteries are blocked. Yes. I, I, oh, I have high cholesterol, so I have to, that's why I also, that's also why I have to check it. So I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to go plant-based. Was high cholesterol a bummer when you found out because you're such an eater? Hell yeah, dude. I, I don't want to like you find This is like when I found out I had a fatty liver when I was like 26. I was like, what the fuck do you mean? I get wasted. And they're like, you got to take it off. And you're like, fuck that. Or my throat hurts and I can't smoke weed. I'm like, no, I want to do the thing I like. Yeah, man. It's is not, that how you feel? Dude, I've, I've been trying to be plant-based for months. I can't do yeah, it, but man. but that's kind of I'm hungry. Lame. It is. Well, it's not just. Well, dude, you're, not, you're, gonna, you're a fucking little South American fucking gerbil, dude. I you got to eat meat. I can't get enough protein, man. I got, I got, yeah. I'm, I'm going nuts without it. It makes me. It makes be crazy yeah dude so i try and also there's only so many because i don't cook you're the only person i would believe if you liked a picture of rogan's elk meat i would <laughs> you're the only person i would believe you'd be the only person i go Lu, let me tell you something about louis he likes to eat so oh, that's a real one i mean I'm, that's a real thing right there i'm down to eat some elk meat but every time he posts those pictures i'm like your arteries must be so fucking clogged that oh, guy man. only all he's eating is all this meat and meat it all goes to muscles well maybe it's all in the muscles it still goes to your heart man there was someone yeah, in there's your a belief system <laughs> <laughs> guy who's dumb who doesn't understand heart science yeah man it's your emotions bro. there was <laughs> there was a comic who went all keto and his cholesterol was like through the roof like they were like thank god we checked it today because you're due for a heart attack any day That's now so funny a doctor I, goes, I, I don't remember. even know how you're standing here right it was now. like that and really? he was yeah and then he stopped doing it i mean that shit catches up to you yeah but maybe the elk is better for you than than uh who knows red meat who well, knows? A, a, a scientists know. Who, it's not, knows? who knows? Oh, science. scientists know. Oh, stop. What? <laughs> is there a hypothesis and then data and then a conclusion and it can always change? Stop. When is the scientific method proven anything except everything? <laughs> I always love that. When people go against science, you go, I don't know. You know how bad I was at science? Go pull up my fucking. Yeah. Go pull up my junior chemistry <laughs> uh, grades. All C's. Yes. I was bad at science when it when it went I copied past, a lot when it went past just knowing what the animals are like I'm a zoo book I have a lot of zoo books yeah. I know about the animals dude that's so funny that's you're it. coming in dropping South American hamsters yeah, yeah capybara and they're like no you got to they go tolens, electron you, you know, idiot yes cosine I'm like what the fuck are you talking what's about? the atomic weight and you go fuck five capybaras five <laughs> five capybaras eat forty pounds of bananas <laughs> they are their atomic weight is <laughs> yeah man i always like eating and drinking it catches up to you like yes. alcoholism i'm glad i quit when i was 30 because this would be the decade where you really start seeing oh some yeah stuff. sure i mean i've so i've been i've been like pretty good about moderate also the drinking thing is like i have pretty good self-control it's crazy you don't really drink though you never really drank you were always no i never i no i had a i had a my last big drunk well actually i was gonna say my last big drunk was when i moved to new york but then the pandemic happened and that was also a big drunk dude if i would have been drinking during that that would have gotten dark oh dude we i, I would have just been standing there in a robe hot, holding a bottle of whiskey <laughs> like they're talking about and i go if there's a virus let it come and get me <laughs> I'm fucking big bad COVID 19 i'm dan 20 <laughs> i would have been how long have you been sober for 10 now? years Jeez. i'm not sober what peep the peep the corner Oh well, it's just what? a bag. Of California's weed. sober. Yeah, but that's not sober. Like how long? The, how long you been off the alcohol that was gonna? I've been off kill the you. hooch for ten years. There you go. Be proud of that. Yeah, I've been off cigarettes for ten years. I miss those more. Really? Yeah, I've heard those are the worst. I see. I never wanted to do them because I. Uh, Katie and I have a point where we almost talk dirty. Where we go, yeah? What are you gonna smoke? because if she starts i start and if i start she starts jesus but you were saying what no just if i'm gonna fuck up my lungs i want to get 
really high off of it. I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to. It gets you. It makes you feel good in a different way. Really, dude. A cigarette with this coffee right now. What happens? Describe it. it just feels you relax. All right. You just like every exhale, you feel cool. You go like that looks cool. Oh man, I talked to Santino about it. He started smoking again, uh-huh. and I was like, "Damn, what was it like?" And he's like, "It's everything you wish it was." <laughs> and I was like, but then you start waking up wheezing, and you're like, "Oh, I'm gonna die!" And your arm gets numb for no reason, and I mean, you're like, "Maybe this isn't worth it." Dude, I, I, you know, I tour sometimes not with just to tell, but also with Ian Fidance. Both it's big the, smokers. It's the second up and second hand smoke tour. It's no good, dude. Yeah, I, and what's unfair is it, it, what's unfair about life is it is going to get you, not them probably and then yeah. this will be the last podcast they play and i'm like i didn't mean to call him a gerbil he called himself a gerbil a capybara, a capybara. <laughs> it's so much more regal and majestic my, my name is capybara. come on call me capybara <laughs> yeah there i mean drinking and eating catches up to you 30s yes yeah 30s for sure. is where the damage but the 40s is where you start seeing what happened yes i mean you see people. like 30s you'll be able to get through fine yeah but then 40s is when i mean my dad died at 48 and it was like through 45 you're like i don't think anything's gonna touch this guy dui and then child it hit him support. hard <clears throat> well then he got hepatitis c okay. and then it turned into cirrhosis so you yeah. die you know yeah, little, that'll do they it. got him with the one too. Yeah, that'll. They got him with it. a little razzle dazzle. Oh yeah, that's a lot of liver damage right there. Yeah, damn. But I would probably say he didn't even feel effects of like, you know, besides losing two families. I would say he probably. <laughs> I'd probably say he didn't feel the effect of boozing hard because like eating hard even now like I eat like shit but I'm forty so I know it's like I gotta start cutting. You feel, I'm not just saying, like, I feel, also, I feel better when I exercise. I feel better when I eat healthy. I mean, you yeah, know yeah. that shit. It's I feel not, better it's not when I up. donate money. You don't see me being a philanthropist. It's like, <laughs> I fucking, I know what you're supposed to do. I'm just a lazy piece of shit. Okay. So exercising for you, you feel like you have to do it. If you miss it. I can't sleep. You I just lay there? And I have, and I get, it's like all those things that I always thought was bullshit before I started exercising. Like, you get more energy. Like, no, I don't. I feel tired. I feel horrible. No, I get more energy, man. I get amped up. Do you work out in the morning or night? Um, usually ends up being like in the evening. Like, I'll try and write. Then I'll go to the gym. Then I'll shower. Then I'll do the shows. Oh, is nice. usually how it goes. Isn't the gym packed when you go in the evening? Um, in Here it is. But I mean, not in your fancy sauna having gym. I don't know what goes on Listen, there. You let's know. stop doing this. <laughs> let's stop doing this. Because first off, I clear the weight room. No one's allowed to watch me exercise. I have my staff clear and prepare. They put up pictures of me when I was at my best over the mirrors. So, Because that's what I'm working towards. Those are the goals. Towards and you the past. Can, And by the way, don't forget to sign up for my class. I start, <laughs> this is where I start shilling everything. You go, Sutter was a good comic, and then he just fucking completely went for the bag. Get paid. Um, get paid? I love you. <laughs> get that fucking money. No, I, it is here in New York, I can't go past five to my my gym and where i live i yeah, can't go packed. past five it's 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 it, like literally there's nothing i can't i can't work out there in my gym in astoria that i went to for years mm-hmm. i always had to go between 11 a.m and 2 p.m or else it was going to be a problem yeah, yeah like if it was like you 3 p.m you're like no because all the treadmills are gonna be taken everything's gonna be a problem the stuff you want to use you have to like work in with a guy yeah and everyone like and everyone uh takes like 10 weights put put them by them like they they just have to have yeah, all the weights hoards. yeah yeah it's like horrible. toilet paper during the pandemic yeah, like, dude, it's crazy it's like you don't have more assholes you have, everyone's <laughs> you still have one asshole yeah that's that's like um that's the thing where with working out that i want to get into like i don't want to be muscular i just want to be i want you to be muscular dude i want dan st germain <laughs> to get super into roids <laughs> I keep, I keep sure, you want to it. turn them into a you just want to tour with battle dwarves is that yeah, what you want battle dwarves. <laughs> these are my battle dwarves if i feed him this is louis the capacara what's it capybara i can't say it capybara <laughs> this is louis the capybara <laughs> daniel he's like oh man i feel like smashing stuff um he's coming on the podcast and that's i'm just gonna tell him to get on roids i've been i've been getting on him i want to see jack saint germain with a giant beard looking like fucking the bounty guy from bounty sheets but drinking you never got into no i drank a lot but i could like always Cal or in san francisco when you started um i was like i was a real stoner in college like i smoked a lot of weed and then you're I putting w- up those old videos follow Louis Cass on instagram it's great he's got all his old videos from the punchline and they're yeah. fucking great jokes thanks yeah i'm, I'm like these are still funny yeah. to me. <laughs> it's know? just funny to see louis young louis 
Well, I look so young. I've, I'm like, I'm already like 22 or 23, but I look like 17. Yeah, I would have guessed you were like a sophomore in college. Yeah, no, no. That's no. honestly what I would have guessed yeah. from watching those videos. I didn't realize how, how what a late bloomer So you're just getting high. I was very high in college. And then I went to, I studied abroad in Brazil and the weed was so bad there that I stopped smoking weed. But it was before I turned 21 and you could drink there. And I was very drunk in Brazil. I was just drunk a lot. That seems dangerous. Yes. Getting drunk in Brazil where there's just like real good kidnappings going on yes but uh i don't know i tried to look like i they I, kidnap you and they're like this man he's too much <laughs> well, how to let him go <laughs> i don't even know if it's a good brazilian accent it's not it's, it's, dog shit. Brazil- it's not horrible. no not even close but it's fun for the it is, situation I, I had a good time <laughs> yeah theater of the mind odyssey of the mind uh you could, you could say that um but so you would get drunk in brazil i was drinking a lot then and when you come back so here's always my question as an alcoholic to people that don't have a problem with alcohol you booze heavy in brazil but when you come back to the united states you don't feel like boozing I, then I, I had many like drunks, I call it, like where I would drink a lot and then I would stop and I would drink a lot. So like when I first moved to New York, like I, I didn't realize, I was like, oh, the bars are open till four. Well, we sh-, which is not how late you should drink until. Yes, it's it like, it's unnecessary. It's very necessary. <laughs> but I'm just you like, want to be good. But I didn't know that I, you know, I was so, I was like, well, you, it's cool because you're not driving home. And then I realized like drunk walking can be dangerous too. In like, a large city like this? Yes. Yeah. You're prey. Well, you're not an even, injured antelope. I'm not even talking. I'm swerving on the sidewalk, man. That's like, so I, like that's how drunk I am. That's so funny. Dude, drunk subway riding. Oh yeah. I mean, dude, I've told that, I told that story on Stav's podcast about List falling asleep and going all the way from Queens back to Brooklyn. Jesus. I've seen, like, I've fallen asleep and woken up on the four train in, like, the Bronx, and you're like, yeah, it's not where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. just, like, it can be, but it's better than having a car. Yes. And, I, and the other thing that stopped me was I'm generally a good drunk. I don't remember a lot. Very but fun. I, I don't fuck. You got a great up. laugh. Oh, thanks. And you're very, like, uh, jovial when you're drunk. Yeah, it makes me happy. I also have a theory... Every Jewish person I know that drinks either does it too much or it's very rare. Like I know a lot of alcoholics. I know a couple alcoholics that are Jewish, Mm -hmm. but most of my Jewish friends have that like Jewish logic where they go like, you know what? That's enough. I don't want to do that. (laughs) And I'm like, oh man, all my Irish Catholic friends are like, you drink because you don't want to fucking feel. (laughs) And the Jewish people go, it gives me a headache. (laughs) Yeah. I I mean, no, but it's actually like a a thing that used to be true. Like the older generation, they are not alcoholics. They're all Jews. And it's like, it's like, yeah, that's for the Gentiles. That's exactly what it is. I had a feeling. Yeah. And I knew I was right. Then you go like, now let them have their fire water. It's like what we did to the natives. Yeah, it's That's like, what you guys do to us. They go, they believe Jesus. Hold on, water. <laughs> they go, what do you want? His blood's wine. You think we would tell you that? You think we're going to tell you our savior's made of what? Merlot? <laughs> you guys have like a very like, these fucking idiots. It really is. It, it, it's like. What we did to the natives where they're like, can we have coffee beans and tobacco? You're like, here's whiskey. Well, no one, Jews aren't giving you guys liquor. You're just uh, drunks. You guys who owns the stores? <laughs> yeah, doing that. that's us. <laughs> <laughs> you go, well, you know, I mean, the building is operated by. No, it's us. It's <laughs> us and it's our, it's the, it, here's another thing we, we talked about. You and I were in Sacramento together. Mm-hmm. We were talking about being horny. And I said, I know a couple of Jewish dudes that are hor- horny a lot. In an, and then you said, yeah, it's because our religion doesn't put guilt on sex. Yeah. And I think that blew my mind because <laughs> you're 100% correct. Yeah, man. Like Jewish guys are like, yeah, fuck, it's not a big deal. And Christians are like, I touch my dick. God fucking hates me. <laughs> you're, like, you're just like, I looked at her tits. God, God, you bastard. You know? And then you guys are like, she has nice boobs. <laughs> it's like, I would kill to be like that. Dude, Dana Gould still has a bit about how he has to turn off the lights to, to masturbate because he's so ashamed. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's like, exactly that's insane. That's what I think the world would be a lot better is if we all had that like no shame with like, hey, yeah. what, it feels good. You're not hurting anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And instead you're like, I can't believe my penis is engorged. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to put some laws into effect that are going to stop poor people from health insurance. You're like, yeah, it's all pressed. It's all pushed down and shit. But when you said that, it, you said it, we were in the car and we were driving from, uh, I think, Sacramento back to San Francisco. And you mm-hmm. said it in such a matter of fact way that I was like, 
That's 100 percent true. <laughs> yeah, that's 100 percent true. Yeah, man. It's, it's all shame. No hangups about it. Yeah, it's weird. And it's it really fucks up a lot of shit. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. And then I think about like, well, I guess there's probably gay shame and and all kinds of things. But oh, how yeah. much that I mean, fucks people up? Yeah, you know? that's got to be like that's a whole different degree of yeah. difficulty. Yes. When you're like, oh, I can't just be the person I am, and they're like, ah, fuck. Yes. Oh, fuck. Everyone's gonna be so mad. Yeah. 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 They'll fuck you up. We were talking about Abraham Lincoln yesterday. Yeah, we were. As we do. <laughs> You know me. <laughs> we love to talk about just talking. Uh, I think you got. I think you can. You can master the Lincoln impression. There's. It, there's no audio of him. What do you mean? Well, the fall score. Everyone. I don't think it was like that. What do you think he was? He was like, today, my fellow Americans. He goes, no. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> that was maybe closer. Oh. There's like a Lincoln voice. You don't know the Lincoln voice? Well, it's it's very like this. Yes, yeah, that's that's kind oh, of like I'm it. Abraham Lincoln. That's good. Hey, maybe, well, you know he used to sleep in a bed with a man? Yes. What? <laughs> and no one even was like... It's what the, it was, that's what he did back then. How This is the joke I tried last night uh -huh. at New Jokes, and it didn't work. So we might have to edit this out, because if this becomes a stand-up joke, I do want to use it. Where I said... Uh, how well i i had a theory like that because of um i went to i was in india yeah. and you do travel like a mother yeah i love to travel yeah and yeah. You, you've gone to some awesome places yeah i tried to get everywhere you know well, didn't like, you I, I will get back to india but didn't you learn how to speak portuguese yeah in brazil i learned portuguese were you fluent there. yeah i was yeah i still i still speak it pretty well but I've, i'm out of practice of course but. do brazilians flip out yeah how do you not do those youtube videos where you go to a brazilian restaurant and speak it perfectly um, because they they don't even hear it at first. They're so they don't they don't even it's like weirds them out in it's such just, a way that it, they don't even understand. It's like what's someone happening. walking up to you and be like, "Hey, how you doing, man?" And you're like, "Good, man. How are you doing?" Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Then yeah. you go, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. Well, yesterday I I recognized uh, I was at doing a show and a lady come up afterwards. She had a Brazilian accent and I knew she was Brazilian, but no one guesses that. I know what it yeah. sounds like when a Brazilian speaks English. And you know what's weird? I learned uh, I studied Spanish during the pandemic. I figured with Portuguese I could learn Spanish really quick. And so I was in Mexico. I lived in Mexico for like a month. And during uh, the pandemic, yeah. What? Yeah, I was. I yeah. I, we um, my uh, my now wife and I went to Tulum and lived there for a month. At the end of it, we went there because we thought it would all be outdoors. So we we because we were both very anxious about it. Sure. And super max masked up yeah, and all you're that. Comfortable about being horny, but yeah, you know, I'm germaphobe like a motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say yeah. And then you're uh, not touching a lot of areas other people are touching. <laughs> yes, exactly. At least goys are just going like, what? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you go, no, no, no. <laughs> goys are the ones that are going like this. Hey, germs are good for you. <laughs> I don't fucking know. Jews are like, no, thank you. No, thank you. I don't mind my boner, but I don't like that. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> I'll lick your boner. I'll get, I won't lick your boner. God, why did I say that? <laughs> no, so, but I went there to, to be safer because I thought at least I can be outdoors. Because mm -hmm. I didn't, because it was winter here, and then you go there and you realize this is oh, this is for people who don't believe that COVID exists. Yeah. Like everyone there is just partying, and I'm like, that's not why I'm here. Well, Tulum was like, yeah, it's like for rich people to get away and go like, ugh, America's got all these restrictions. Yes, I didn't know that going into it. But the good thing was, so where did you live? You didn't live on like a resort. I found a like an Airbnb, and I, we we got our own place. And so uh, you were just the gringos that lived there for a month. There's a lot of gringos that live in Tulum for all the time. It's like a really? yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. a lot of expats or what? Fuck. Yeah. It's like, it's dude. It's like, it's one of those places that like should have been there 20 years ago. Cause it was like really, it was like a beautiful paradise beach. And it's right next to these like ruins and you can see this old temple and you, there's all these cenotes, which are these weird, like underground pools you can dive in. And it's become so overly touristy. It's like kind of ruined it. Like the beach in the movie, the beach. <clears throat> I don't, back in the day it was. I'm like sure. they said, like it was unbelievable. Yeah. And then they said that movie came out. And yeah. And it was ruined like, oh, it. I want to go there. And it was like, ruined more than that. Up. It's like, so on it's the. It's like a good burger spot. When you find a spot yes. that you're like, oh, this place is so good. And then it like, you know, someone famous goes there. Yes. They're like, oh, did you see Zach Efron eating there? And you're like, fuck. But hopefully, maybe there's lines, but the food is still good. I'm saying here what they have is like on the beachfront property in what's supposed to be national park land, they've built like nightclubs and they're all along this road and just facing each other these nightclubs they turn it into cancun yeah i guess that's what cancun but i'm to me it's like why would you turn a beach into a nightclub it's supposed to be a beach it's supposed to be nature you know what i mean like that it's yeah, like no, the no. worst place for a nightclub why don't you put the nightclub 
away from the beach and leave let the beach be the fucking beach but they you can't put do your, that there you got to put your goy cap on dude sell booze <laughs> you got to find a place to sell booze put your goy goggles on dude you got to if we don't call this episode goy goggles I, then i've i've messed up as a podcast host but yeah you like those places cancun's very similar to that you can okay. tell cancun was like a gorge you, like i bet with cancun it's like if you went there in the 70s you there's ruins Every place you go, you should have been here. Twenty New York City, you should have been here twenty years ago. No thanks. Oh, come on. Pre pre Giuliani, you can you can live here if you want. I'm I not, will. I'm not carrying a razor blade in my cheek just to take the N train two stops. Yeah, but they invented. That's why when you Colin Quinn has that L train bit where he what? goes, "Yeah, he can't ride the L train." He's like, "Now people got the iPads out." He's like, "Put that away." Put yeah, that away. yeah. <laughs> I get that it was dangerous, but there's so much culture here. Then, man, you know what? You know what city I would absolutely say that with San Francisco. San Francisco it's same the, here. You really don't think it's the same here? I mean, like, I think dude, they I, invent I, punk I, rock here. They invent hip hop here. These came out of this fucking city because now it was comes so out of terrible. Here, nothing. They had to create something good to get out of it. San Francisco was cool as shit in the '90s. Yeah, it it was like affordable. Everyone lived there, and yeah, I'm man. sure New York had a lot of. I'm sure New York in the '90s fucking ruled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Cancun in the 70s. It must have been incredible. It's just like probably like affordable. You know what? Uh, Hunter S. Thompson used to write about that a lot because he'd go to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. He would go to like places like that. But this is in the 60s and 70s. Uh -huh. And he's like, it costs five bucks to live for a month. Yeah, it's incredible. That's what the whole rum diary was about was he went and worked in Puerto Rico writing for a sports page. Cool. He like wrote for a newspaper. He was a sports editor and like kind of put his adventures into a book. And then they made that horrible Johnny Depp movie <laughs> that started the him and Amber Heard love spat. Oh, it did? Are you, yeah, I've never seen that. Was, so he's in two different ones of his? He's in, he's in the other one too, right? He plays he plays Raul Duke in uh, Fear and Loathing and Love. Yeah, Lady. yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, and then he like uh and then he plays he he got it made. Like he got Rum Diary made. Okay. Because Rum Diary was the only fictional work that Hunter S. Thompson did. Okay, cool. And so they turned it into a movie. And it if you've read Rum Diary, you're like it shouldn't be a movie. <laughs> like Fear and Loathing, you're like, what the fuck? Uh -huh. Rum Diary, you're like, it's, you know, it's a good story. <laughs> There's a lot of authors that would go to Mexico and just live. I mean, that's that's in on yeah, the road. Hemingway would fucking yeah, yeah. All Hemingway of would them. go everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's all it's all it's definitely the move is to be an expat and go all these places. But like everywhere is worse than it was. Nothing's is there's there's few. It's hard to find. It's that thing also where like it's great that more people are living better and more people have access to look at the cool do and see all these cool things. But they just get overrun by tourists, man. Well, especially now with like Instagram and it's just yes, like that can ruin things very. Easily. Anytime I see a video with voiceover where they go, I'm about to show you a really cool place yeah. that no one knows about. I'm about to ruin this place. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to fuck up the local economy <laughs> of this place. It's a mountain. And then they do the thing where they put their hand on the camera and they pull back and they go, you can get this room for only $32 a month. And then you call them and they go, we're sold out for the next seven years. But it does. It sucks. And you also all those pictures are so posed. Like I've been to, I like I went to, I just honeymooned in Japan and I don't know if you've seen it. They so have I mean, these, this guy travels. Yeah, I love to. <laughs> I know, I love it. I love it. I'm so lazy. So in Kyoto, they have this like these mountains with these red arches, these like Buddhist arches. And all the photos are of like people, just like one person in the arch. But you go through, it's like a single file line, both directions trying to get through them. You have to like wait to get a second where it looks like it's just yeah, you. Yeah, they're like the wings in uh, Nashville where it's a bunch of girls being like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, it's like Everest. There's a line. Oh, yeah. There's a literal line to summit Everest. Do you remember when they, uh, I like when the Sherpas like rebelled against them. They were just like sick of their shit and just started like just throwing shit at them and like trying that. to pull them off the mountain because they're being assholes. Little strong men whipping yeah. rocks at them yeah, and being man. like, dude, you'll get pulled by a Sherpa. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. I would go full villain if I was a Sherpa. Yeah. I'd just hide. <laughs> I'd be like fucking sand people in Star Wars. <laughs> and they'd be like, they hide. They walk in single file to hide their numbers. And I'd just be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have an army of Sherpas, dude. <laughs> Fuck with me and my army of Sherpas. <laughs> Get them, boys! That's what I'd say all the time. I go, no more summit. <laughs> you, do, you shall not pass. Dude, an army of Sherpas sounds awesome. Sounds really That's funny. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> These little, you, You've given them like eight different voices. Because none of us know what a Sherpa sounds like. I'm a voice guy. <laughs> 
I hit it till it sticks. I'll get Lincoln. I'm coming for you, honest Abe. I'm going to get that fucking voice. You're tall and lanky, just like me. Yeah, you're very Lincoln. What's uh? What's what? the most dangerous? What's the most danger you've ever felt in being traveling? Like, have you ever been in a situation where you're like? I've gotten like pickpocketed twice in Brazil. Yeah, but pickpocketed is they don't want any PC. They're just going to take it from you. No, well, that's the thing is like I always thought pickpocketing was all smooth, where they just like reach in your pocket. Yeah, and hours in. later, you're like, oh, oh, I guess it was that oh, time. Where did that it's like no, I can go? feel someone's hand in my fucking pocket. He's like, it's a super crowd. They're like trying to. One person's pushing me away, and the other one's grabbing the food. Uh, grabbing, grabbing the money out With of my food, pocket. Don't do that. No, no, don't grab my food. You fucking, oh boy. <laughs> Although once I had a crazy the chupacabra. Or whatever it is. <laughs> once that's the chupacabra. I'm yeah. the capybara. It's totally different. <laughs> that's my cousin. <laughs> Chupacabra's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're getting pickpocketed they're like pushing you around it's like you can it's like is so it like when they dress a prince in a movie where they're like you must get ready for the bowl and they're like <laughs> pushing him and shit like, it's like that but less glamorous it's like yeah. it's so crowded it's like passing through a crowd that's so crowded that they can just put their hand in your pocket and you're like oh, already being pushed out of the way off. that's what I'd say to them fucking tug it it's like go, <laughs> no that's how you avoid pickpocket you go finger my asshole you go, what are you doing no me sir no oh yeah you're gonna fucking give me a digit but no what i was gonna say though about about india though was like so in india um male friends hold hands walking down the street and I'm like, bring it over here. I don't know, come man. It makes me feel weird. Oh, come on, man. That makes me feel weird. I can't <laughs> do this. There's a, moment, there's a moment where you go like, I'm my old man. Someone's got to take this show to guy court. Yeah, dude, well, we just... broke a lot of rules. Don't worry. They'll have a little the God get me. And they'll, they'll both prosecute it. But when, You're safe when you're in the hands of the God and little Duval. They're in law firm. <laughs> Do we prosecute awkward whites? We got him. <laughs> we'll fucking take him down in guy uh, court. That's hilarious. But but my theory was that in these places, so you're not really allowed to be gay in India. So my theory is there's these places where it's you're like not- Like Saudi Arabia when yes. the boys like kiss each other goodbye. Exactly. Like where be. you're not allowed to be gay, you're free to be even gayer. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm not gay. I'm just fucking my friend in the ass. Yeah, they like, go, this what isn't is gay. It's, it's trust. Just, yeah, it's just what we do. I'm not doing this for pleasure, yeah. like a woman, like a ew, no, 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 they, like a gross, ewy woman. Ew. No, they say like, they say that. There's some kind I'm of- I'm telling you, I do not like men. <laughs> I want to fuck a woman. Ugh. <laughs> fuck a woman. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm thinking about pussy. Oh. <laughs> you ever heard that saying? This They say this about somewhere in, in the Middle East that it was like, women for duty- like men for pleasure and something yeah. else. Like there's a whole run. They have a breakdown. Dude, have you know a, what I mean? I have a clip from law and order SVU that I always send to people that really makes me laugh and I'll send it. I'll have Mike edit it in, but it's ice T talking to a guy who commits a crime. And it's at the moment where he admits something and he goes, he goes, I have relationships with women and I sleep with men. And ice T goes, guess what? That means he gay. It's right here. <laughs> I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. I have relationships with women and sex with men. And I got news for you. That means you're gay. <laughs> but if you don't think I hit people all the time with... For you. That means you're gay. <laughs> a lot of my friends will attest they get hit with that a lot if they say some shit. But... <laughs> That's what it is, because they're like, nah, man, I, I just fucked my bro. Yeah. We're just we're, we're just blowing off steam. Well, it's not gay. We're not gay. It just feels good. It's so funny. It's a tight hole. What do you so we do? We should just send, like, the most Gen Z, like, TikTok influencer there to go, honey, baby, <laughs> you're gay. And they're like, no, I'm not. I fuck my friend because we're boys. And they go, baby, 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 you're gay. That person should not be in these countries I'm talking about. Well, that's why do you think they're not illegal? Why do you think it's so dangerous? Because all those dudes want to fuck other dudes. It's dangerous. They're like, get that the fuck out of here. You know, it's like, uh, that's like when you see super Christian pastors and they're mm -hmm. like homosexuality and then they get caught just circus sealing seven dudes in oh, a yeah. motel. What did you call it? Circus sealing. What's that mean? 
you know, when they play horns, they go, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> that's them, but with peni. <laughs> that's them sucking dick. <laughs> They're just, all, those, all those super Christian pastors are just blow banging a bunch of gay dudes. <laughs> Yeah. Is that an expression or did you make that up? I made that up. Circus That's sealing, awesome. Yeah, circus sealing them or uh, usually, <laughs> this is gross, but I say like when two girls blow a dude, I call it mama dogging. Where I go, oh, what are you guys, puppies? You mama dogging it? <laughs> <laughs> they won't stick. It's just fun to throw around a conversation. It's the thing that someone probably could prove to me, like, that's not logically the right thing to say. And I'd be like, yeah, I don't know. It just sounded funny. I like it. I don't mm. like it as much as circus sealing. Circus sealing seven dudes. That's great. absolutely what a Christian pastor. I just kept thinking about what, you, what happens when you look at the roof of a circus. Like, it's like a like the big top is up there. Oh, I the didn't know seal? what it was happening. Like, yeah. That's a good seal. That's a good rain <laughs> seal. No, I meant the performing seal that plays all the horns. Love it. Like, <laughs> but just put, add penises. And then a guy that says being gay is evil. And that's usually the situation. In some shoddy <laughs> motel. I always think it's funny. I always think it's funny when someone's really against something, like adamantly against something, and then they get caught doing it. Oh, it's that's, hilarious. That's my proof of God. <laughs> that's like, I don't need religion. I just go like, there it is. There's yeah. God. Well, it's just everyone's projecting and everyone's, you know. Everyone's projecting. Yeah, Why yeah. do you think like, uh, <clears throat> I think that's really interesting, and I'm not political at all. I'm apolitical. But I think it's really funny because it's like, the far left is always like, um, racist you're racist and then they get caught being prejudiced and then they're like i didn't <laughs> that's how they eat themselves well the whole thing is everyone is uh no everyone is makes mistakes yeah. everybody makes that's mistakes everybody. you know and so. it's like the far right is like oh, i fucking they're coming for they're gonna steal our shit and it's <laughs> like well is it because you stole shit and they're like <laughs> fuck you dude fuck you it's oh that's like, that's totally what it is it's like that's why that's why uh, all the slave owners are so scared of what their slaves would do because they know how horrific they treated them yeah and when if they came back even like a tenth the amount yeah, they're like, it, I would, don't be, want that it shit. would be just a nightmare so whenever you see someone extreme they're usually acting out on themselves of yeah. something that's like going on where you're like oh you have that problem in yourself yes like that's why whenever i hear you're like a conservative friend of mine go like there's a lot more freedom down there it's like what do you do what are you talking about what what do you, what do you need to be what what are you trying to free up bud <laughs> and then when there's people that are on the far left they're like racist you're homophobic you're like i think you're i think you've got some racism in you yes of course. and then they always get caught and they're like but hey it's that, be in the middle bud right here <laughs> hold your friend's hand suck his dick <laughs> when's that happen? i don't know it's just funny it's, just, it's so funny to me to be holding hands and being like all right later bro i'll kill you if you're gay like, you're gay <laughs> that's some gay shit um how long have we did like oh hell yeah let's keep going oh yeah what? dude great call mike um edit that run it back louis katz Go check it out on his YouTube page. Subscribe to his YouTube page. Lou's one of the funniest guys ever. He just, you make me laugh. I love going, like, the the moment we got to work together, we were friends. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, you crack my shit up every time. <laughs> Thanks, man. I love going on the road with people that I love watching, like sitting in the audience and watching, because then you're like, oh, this is great. Ah, thanks, it's like dude. I booked a show and I just get paid for it. <laughs> totally. you know, what sucks is when you're having such a good time watching somebody, then you're like, I got to go do it. <laughs> yeah, it does. Fuck. <laughs>